Welcome to my session today. I'm Af Malhotra, the co-founder of Growth Enabler. I'll tell you a little bit about my company, but before I do so, I want to welcome you today to a new reality, a reality that all of you have been part of. You're either investors, you're either entrepreneurs, you're either big businesses, and you're involved in some shape or form in creating this future for ourselves and, and for, the, for the planet today. I can tell you, when I was a young child, I used to dream about, fantasize about being Superman. And today, with the virtual reality world that we are creating, I think I may be able to live out that fantasy without actually being that person. It's a truly tremendous existence that we're in today. So, as I move forward and, and speak to you over the next 15 or 20 minutes, I'd first like to just try and understand who I'm talking to. So, how many people in this room today are entrepreneurs or startups? Can you put your hands up, please? Wonderful. So about 50% of the room. How many people here today are investors? Okay, we don't have any investors really in the room. Safe. How many people are big businesses, large corporations, looking at the VR world or the AR world? Okay, we have about 40% of the room. And the rest, I guess, uh, do, we have any, do we have any industry experts, any journalists, anyone from the media? Wonderful. Excellent. Well, welcome. So, now that I'm talking to a, a good cluster of individuals, I'd like to spend some time talking about this company that I built. And three years ago, I decided to leave my corporate existence and built an organization that was made to enable entrepreneurs in the startup economy to get visibility, to be able to reach out to big businesses and large corporations in the most democratic way possible. That became a mission for me and my co-founder, based out in India, I'm based out in London. And we left our large corporate existences and we decided to become entrepreneurs. In that journey, what we've decided to really do is to bring two important communities together, startups and big businesses and corporations. And the way we do that is by delivering intelligence and insights about the entire startup economy, the global startup economy. And we're doing this to try and help big businesses better understand corporations, uh, understand startups, and startups to understand big businesses and corporations. That became our mission. This is what we're about. And we've built a platform that's artificially and uh, you know, machine learning enabled. And this platform is right now in existence. Please go on to growthenabler.com to check it out because it is, it is probably the only way a startup can get a voice out to the big business world. And big businesses are looking for you today. They're keenly eager to work with you today and this is a wonderful opportunity for us to do so. That's a little bit about my company and I'm happy to have conversations with you as we move along. The, the, the most important thing to bear in mind here is that Unlike many, many years ago, large companies today are fearful about this concept of disruption. They're worried about being extinct. Yale University conducted a longitudinal study that says over the last 30 or 40 years, large companies, their longevity, their life expectancy has dropped from 50 years down to 14 years today. The amount of churn you're going to see in the S&P 500, the amount of new companies you're going to see emerging on the planet today is going to be much, much higher than ever before. And it's going to be because of people like you in the room, entrepreneurs, startups. We're going to drive that change. And this is what big companies are worried about. They're desperately seeking tech innovation. I'm speaking to CXOs in the FTSE, in the Fortune, markets, and they are desperately seeking innovation from people like yourself in augmented and virtual reality. And I'll tell you a little bit about this as we move along. Like I said, with startups, the most important thing here is for us as startups to gain visibility. All of you have amazing inventions and innovations, I'm sure, here today. The biggest challenge is getting heard, enabling people to listen to you. 
And it's, it's becoming harder and harder. I don't know if you know this fact, that 1.78 million technology startups on the planet today, according to GEM, the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor. That number will only double because of markets like India and China. It will only double, which means it's going to be harder for you to differentiate yourself. There's going to be a lot more noise in the market, and therefore, you need some sort of a platform or a medium to gain access to this big market. Does that make sense? Do you follow me, guys? Yeah? Okay, great. So, as we think about the, the opportunities that's, that rest here for big businesses and for startups, I want to touch briefly on what Growth Enabler produced a few months back. Now, I have a whole set of copies of a report we published for the UK market on the AR VR environment. And we found some very, very interesting things. The revelations were quite insightful for us. In short, what I want to share with you, and you can, you can take a copy of the report, it's just lying here on the left, so please feel free to take a copy at the end of the session. I'll quickly summarize the report for you and I'll move on to a piece of the presentation, which is a lot to do with how you can engage with big businesses and CXOs. And that'll be the, the follow-on part of this presentation. So there are five things that came out of this particular report that I want to share with you. The first one was all around, uh, very relevant for startups, all around product usability. So what we found, what we found doing our analysis was that there were many, many type of AR and VR products in the marketplace. Very exciting products, early stage, mid stage, or late stage. One of the biggest challenges we've seen is that when startups engage with large companies, and if the product isn't ready, if the product isn't at use case stage, or the product isn't at a stage where a big business can apply it in a proof of concept or a pilot. It becomes very, very hard then to pursue conversations with that big company. We've seen numerous products out there at very, very early stages, which is fantastic. And what we are saying here is build products, build products that have very, very strong usability cases. There are many products that I've personally experienced that are a long way off actual usability for loads of reasons. The reasons are, uh, are many. The, the one big learning was that the product usability of your, of your innovation drives investment and drives growth. It sounds obvious, but you'll be surprised how many companies are building products that are actually not usable at the end of the day. Now, you might say, well, look at companies like Magic Leap. They've raised nearly uh, $1.3 billion and they still don't have a product and they don't do any sales. Now, there will be many companies like that out there, but, but not so many. So it's very important to think about the usability of what you create. Master an industry. Now, it's so important to build a product that is fit for purpose for a vertical or a sector. I, I really urge you to create a product in mind uh, when you think about a, a problem you want to solve in a particular sector that you are close to. So, for example, if there is a frustration you have in the retail sector, let's say you wanted to buy more easily, or let's say you felt that advertising should be more innovative or more creative, then work a product for a particular sector. Always have a primary sector that you master. What you shouldn't do is build a product and then think about where the use case is going to happen, because that, that actually hinders the commercialization of what, what you build. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. What I'm hearing all from the market is that a lot of large companies are saying to me, it would be great to use products that are easy to integrate into environments. I'm personally working with one of the largest media companies in the world right now at board level. And what they're saying to me, and they're huge on augmented and virtual reality, they've got a huge amounts of money to pump in this area. What they're saying to me is, they would love to see products that are built that are easier to integrate into existing infrastructure. As you know, large companies have legacy environments. They have infrastructure that is, doesn't always talk to each other. And when you build your product, do think about the open source elements of your product. There are times when open source isn't relevant and uh, your product is built on a private ecosystem, but do think about creating a product that is integratable. The last two points are very relevant to big businesses, and I know there, there are some big businesses here. I'm, I'm going to probably try and do a Q&A a little bit later. So for big businesses, two things to, to bear in mind. Um, you've got to make investments in this domain. You've got to put money aside. If you're a big company here today, please put money aside. Please be open about the fact that you're going to be working with new technology that is not always ready 
for implementation. Please engage with this community, talk to them, integrate them into your environment, incubate them, create accelerators, try and learn about how these new technologies are going to transform the way you can engage with your customer. After all, if, if Yale's predictions do come true and your company is not going to be around in the next decade or 15 or 20 years, then you've got to put in place measures today to ensure that you survive and thrive in that environment. And, and only technology will allow you to do that. Okay. Finally, it's so important, it's so, so important that large companies and startups look at implementations of these technologies in the context of a real situation in a business. So, for example, the media company I was talking to, they're looking at how augmented reality can be used at events like this. They do huge events. Um, for, for their clients and communities and you know thousands of people turn up to these events and they want augmented reality to work in an environment so you know the the experience as soon as you walk into an event is enriching right you you can touch and feel things as you're walking through the event unlike today which is more static and they want technologies that can be used and piloted in those environments so so you know use cases are something that i'm seeing as being very very popular moving forward something for you to think about now again the there's a lot of detail in this report that is available here please feel free to 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 look at it so for the for the startups in this room again um, has has any startup here engaged with the large business successfully can you just put your hand up if you have, and you're commercializing your product with that large company? Anyone in this room? Don't be shy, please. Okay, so if there is no one in this room, this is going to be very insightful for you. Let me tell you what this slide is all about. For the last six months, I've spent time with over 50 senior executives at board level in various companies around the world, primarily parts of Europe, UK, and USA. What I've learned from those conversations has been quite insightful, and you must pay attention to this if you're a startup. Many startups come to me and say to me, we have great products, but we can't be heard. Every time we go to a large company, we meet them at events, we exchange business cards, maybe we have a meeting or a coffee, but it doesn't ever go further. Some startups say to me, they have even proof of concepts or pilots that happen with these companies, but it still doesn't go further. They can't commercialize their product. If you've been in that situation, I feel for you. There is a way out. I'm going to give you some solutions and hacks, some techniques to move forward. Now, one thing you guys must know, this is, this is a summary of what I've picked up from my dialogue with CXOs. And there are three things that you should know about, and it's self-explanatory. The first one is, every time I speak to big businesses, they say to me, listen, Af, if a startup wants to engage with us, they must make their product relevant to us. You have to speak in our language. We know it's frustrating. We know we sometimes are much slower than you are, but you have to speak in our language. You have to understand our sector and our business. And if you're building an AR or a VR product, yes, it's, it's, it's exciting. Yes, it's filled with imagination, but you have to spend time as founders understanding how we do business. Until you do that, you will always come across roadblocks, things that will hold you back in commercializing the deal. That's the first thing I hear again and again and again. And if, if you've heard this before, then you're hearing it again. And this is a reality of what stops deals happening. The second thing is be transparent. There's one company I was working with in the retail sector based out in the UK, very large organization. They said to me, look, we've been working with AR VR companies for the last year and a half actively. And the one thing we struggle with is when we don't know how their pricing structure works or how the business model works or how the unit economics work. It's very, very important for these organizations to give us clarity around that. I know I'm running out of time. The, fast, the last one is, show me the ROI. Show me the return on investment on your business. So I know how I'm going to be able to take your technology, make more money out of it, or deliver more customer impact. Okay? Does that make sense? Just give me some feedback. Are you all there? 
Yes? Excellent. Thank you. Right. So, because I'm running out of time, I'm going to move to the next slide. So, if you might be thinking, well, listen, okay, this is, this is fine, Af, but at the end of the day, what should I do if I'm a startup to be able to communicate more effectively with the end user? So, there's a technique that I came up with many, many years ago when I was at a company called Gartner, who you might have heard of. I used to run a part of their business, and I was training people on how to pitch to CXOs. This is a really simple technique. It's called REAP. R-E-A-P. REAP. The first part of REAP is relevance. Every time you talk to a corporate executive or anyone in business, make your talk track, your story, relevant to them, 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 them. WIFM, W-I-F-M, it stands for what's in it for me. What's in it for me? Every corporate executive just cares about themselves to some degree. What's in it for them? Talk their language. Second piece, excitement. Make your talk track really exciting, energetic, passionate. Show them the wow factor. Show them how their world can change because of your product. Show them how their world can change because of your product. Make it wow. Third point, anxiety. You have to make it, you have to give some anxiety, some anxiety, some FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. You have to create a feeling where someone feels if they don't work with you, they're going to lose out. Scarcity. Make them feel like this solution that you've created, if they don't apply it in their business, they're going to lose advertising dollars. They're not going to be able to engage with their customers the way they need to. Anxiety. The final point is possibilities. I see this again and again. If you're working with a large company and you don't allow them to dream, you have to allow them to dream. Say to them, if you use my solution or my product in the future, in the future, this is what our world will look like together, in harmony. Create possibilities. People make rational decisions for emotional reasons. People make rational decisions for emotional reasons. Make sure you touch the emotions. Final point, I am cutting off, okay. Um, right, okay, you're cutting me off. Final few points. I wanted to, I want to quickly tell you that every CXO in the world today, every senior executive today, is, falls into eight personas, eight personas. One of the first personas is knowing that every executive is either seasoned has loads of experience, or new in the job, or a maverick, transformational, right? Know that every time you speak to a CXO, the way they look at your business is based on their personal experiences. If someone is seasoned, they will have ego, they will have, they will have their own experiences, they may not be willing to change. If someone is a maverick, someone is transformational, they will want to work with ARVR companies because they see this as the future. Right? Know who you're talking to. It's very important if you gauge the CXO, you'll know how to position yourself and how to get success out of all the hard work you've put in as a startup. I know time is short. Do I have two minutes for questions? Yes? Okay. Uh, any, any questions for me? Um, I'm sorry, I'm, my French is not great, so I don't want to try it, but my English is much better. So, um, any questions? Yes, sir. Yes. So uh, the question is, do I have any examples of startups who've worked with, with larger companies? Yes. So one particular startup that uh, I'm you know, particularly proud of is a company called Zappa in the augmented reality space. They were presenting at one of our events uh, a few months back at the ARVR event. They built a relationship with a particular media company. I can't name the media company, but they built a relationship with this media company over four or five months, and they've managed to commercialize their augmented reality app, uh, using it at various events and, and, and um, facilities. They, they've also managed to do that by A, understanding the business of that particular media. They realized that media company was would take four to six months to make a decision. So they work their strategy on the basis of knowing how long it takes to, to, to make that decision. They also map the organizational chart of the company. So they knew who makes decisions in the company. It wasn't just the head of technology or the marketing officer. It were, there were other people behind the scenes. So they spent a lot of time account managing to be able to win the deal. Uh, Zappa is a really good example. They've just raised, uh, I think, 3.7 million pounds or dollars. So very, very exciting company. And, and there are many such companies out there like that. I'm happy to give you personal examples offline. Okay, uh, I think I've run out of time. I'm going to be here through the event. Uh, I'm standing here. If you want to take a copy of the report, please do. And uh, on that note, may the growth enabler force be with you. May you be successful and uh, be strong, be courageous. And as Steve Jobs said, stay foolish, stay hungry. All the best. Thank you very much.